In this concluding portion of the viral pathogenesis video series, we are going to be talking about DNA and RNA viruses and some predictions that you can make about them. Making predictions about diseases based upon what they are in the sense of the genome for viruses of DNA versus RNA is critical to understanding how the world of microbiology works. Many times we have to make our educated predictions in order to see how a virus is going to act. And so therefore, on the quizzes and tests, it is likely that you may have to make some predictions based upon whether it is a DNA virus or RNA virus. So, I want us to go through and compare and contrast DNA versus RNA viruses and what you would see with these types. With DNA viruses, you're going to see a slower replication and a slower transmission rate. While RNA is going to be the opposite. This is going to be quick replication and quick transmission. DNA viruses are going to have a big genome that is usually double-stranded. So I'm putting DS, and that stands for double-stranded, while RNA are smaller genomes and single-stranded. The types of infections that these viruses have can either be acute, chronic, or latent. DNA viruses are usually chronic or latent infections while RNA are acute. DNA viruses are going to undergo mutations slower than RNA viruses. So there's less mutations that occur with DNA genomes. This is in part due to the double-stranded versus single-stranded nature. With a double-stranded DNA, you have your bottom strand and your top strand that will match each other. So they can check to make sure that they are correct. While single-stranded, there's only one strand, so it doesn't have a friend or a second strand to make sure that it did it right. So the virus will replicate and it says, I think I did it correct, but there's no way to double check, no way to make sure that it did that. Therefore, you're going to see more mutations occurring here versus when you have something that's going to check to make sure it did it correctly. These more mutations are going to end up in the RNA changing more quickly, which is why it has quick replication transmission. And in addition, as it does that change, it's more likely to be a zoonotic disease, or in other words, zoonosis. A reminder of what zoonotic diseases are, it means that it went from an animal to a human. So viruses can change just a little bit. So for example, let's say we had an infection that only affected chimpanzees. And so then the virus spike, let's say, changes just a little bit. Now it now can attach to a human receptor. Now it can now infect uh, human cells and be a human infection. So it can be zoonosis. And that's because the mutations are going to cause that change to happen more quickly. So as you look at your diseases, look to see if DNA and RNA, look to see if some of these predictions apply to them. They most likely will, as these are the common predictions that scientists make when they discover new diseases to start out with. And these are the same sort of effects or principles that you may be doing on your quizzes and tests.